Ms. Rule, you will go first. You have three minutes to present your opening statement. Thank you. And thank you again for coming this evening and um, uh, for listening to the candidates. Um, I am Margaret Ann Rule, and I am running for the uh, 68th um, House District, which is all of Knox County and the eastern part of Delaware County. I was born and raised in Knox County. Um, I'm a graduate of Fredericktown High School. Um, prior to, after that, um, I was uh, elected Mount Vernon City Auditor, and I held that position for 11 years, and I was the Knox County Auditor for 13 years. The reason I'm running for um, state representative is I, I love this community. I want to represent this community um, in Columbus, and I, I, like I said, I was born and raised here, so therefore I uh, have a, lot, a huge concern for this community. I am active in a lot of activities. You'll see me at a lot of uh, communication uh, where, I, where I meet with people. Um, I have office hours that I hold regularly. I'm on the, the radio uh, regularly, and so there's lots of ways to communicate with me. Um, I have, um, like I said, I, I have agriculture as my background. I'm on uh, three different committees in Columbus. I'm on agricultural and Natural Resource Committee. I'm on the Financial Institutions and Homeland, or House, House and Urban Development, and I'm also on the Transportation Committee. So um, those committees are very close to me. Like I said, the agriculture, I was raised on a farm, so therefore the Agriculture Committee uh, fits me very well. The Financial Institutions, I sit on the uh, uh, CES Credit Union Board. I have been active um, with it, and um, on transportation, um, I was raised around Kikos and construction, and um, so transportation has been very important to me. So therefore, um, those are my reason reasons for uh, running for this position. Um, I feel that I'm the, the best qualified person for it, and um, I just feel that um, you know my my background and experience um, makes me the best candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miller, your three minutes start now. Good evening. I'm Randy Miller. I would like to thank Mount Vernon News, KnoxPages.com, uh, WMVO, WQIO, and the Mount Vernon City Schools for hosting this forum. I would like to thank the individuals present this evening for the, attending this forum this evening for the opportunity to introduce myself to the community and to share with you the many concerns of the 68th district community as well as my ideas and philosophies in serving the people of the 68th congressional district. Let me begin by saying the public service is a privilege. It is a privilege because the voting public has chosen you to be their voice, their representative, their advocate in presenting the problem solving in the issues and concern most impacting in their lives. And in these complicated times, there are many issues that affect everyday, ordinary, hardworking people and their families on a daily and ongoing basis. There is no individual or family member that would say, I don't want good community schools for my children. There's no individual or family member that would say, I want ineffective, poorly trained teachers to teach my children. There's no individual or family member that would say, I don't want a clean and safe environment to raise my family. There's more here. I'm going to have to skip. Uh, time's running short on me. The public has lost many fronts of the public education, being a continued big loser. More public school underfunding more public money diverted to failed chartered schools, experiments coupled with politicians, not teachers, driving reforms and the shifting of the state's funding responsibilities. All are having devastating effects on the homeowners, teachers, school districts, students, K through college, and, the, uh, and in the end, businesses. Uh, Ohio is being protected. Where, where is the stewardship? Where is the oversight? Where is the leadership? Where is the public policy 
that protect or benefits and protects Ohio residents and Ohio natural resources. Let me, uh, in closing, I see a vision for a better Ohio, an Ohio built on ideas, concerns, and the endless energy of the regular hardworking taxpayer. In conclusion, I want to uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Again, my name is Randy Miller. I would appreciate your uh, vote in November. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gosick, you have three minutes. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Joyce Gosick, and I'm running for House District 68. Um, my family arrived in the uh, United States on Thanksgiving Day after um, the Second World War. My parents came with nothing but hope and um, hope for a better future and the American dream. Um, my father worked as an auto worker. My mother uh, took the bus downtown to clean the courthouse. And the two of them uh, managed to buy a modest home and uh, put away money for their pensions and put two girls through college without students' loans. Um, I graduated from The Ohio State University and I received my master's from Bowling Green State University. I'm a product of Ohio's finest public schools and I taught in public school for 39 years, 38 of them right here in Mount Vernon, Ohio. I'm retired now, but I'd like to continue to serve my community. And I want to uh, restore the American dream and I want to restore faith in our government again. Ohio has suffered like the rest of the nation from the latest recession, but our economic recovery has been slow. It's slower than the national average. We're in the bottom uh, 10 states on job creation, and this administration and this legislature has slowed the recovery by shifting the tax burden to the middle class and uh, the lower income families. Um, they talk about a balanced budget, and I think that's wonderful. Um, but that is the law now, so any administration will have to do that. I wonder how it is that they ignored the unconstitutional funding of public schools for so long. Since 1997, it's been declared unconstitutional. Uh, the balance uh, budget is, is balanced on the backs of the middle class, the working families, seniors, and our children. Uh, they cut funding to local governments so that uh, service has been cut, police, fire, road crews, streets, bridge repairs. Uh, our commissioners are running out of money to do those things. So everyone had to put up levies, and if you wanted these services, and you wanted parks and libraries, and to help the developmentally disabled, we had to put up levies. And that's how we kept those services that we all cherish and need. Um, and if the levy failed, then, as it did in East Knox, the school levy failed, um, you have a school in financial emergency. Uh, the legislature has so far threatened worker rights with the uh, Senate Bill 5 that we finally repealed. They've threatened voting rights and keep insisting that we have to shorten our voting time. They've defunded women's health. And I'm just looking to have the Ohio government work for all Ohioans and not just the special interest groups. So I would be honored to represent you in Columbus and fight for your interests at the State House. Thank you. We'll start with our first question that you kind of just alluded to. Um, in 1997, the Ohio Supreme Court ruled the state's funding of schools is unconstitutional. The state budget has slashed money to school districts and rural schools like East Knox, which is now under fiscal watch, were hurt the worst. How should the state, fund, how should the state funding system be changed so that districts are funded equally? And have you or would you vote in favor of unfunded, unfunded mandates that will reap further financial burden on districts. Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. Uh, what I would do is, uh, it was in 91 to 2011, uh, there was, before that, there was uh, tax, personal taxable uh, ta tax from businesses, and that was removed by the government of the state of Ohio. Uh, with that, that put the extra burden on the taxpayers as well as the farmers. Uh, what I would do is try to reinstitute that and try to get the money coming back into the uh, schools where it should be going. Would you vote for unfunded mandates? 
I'm not sure on that one. Ms. Gosick, you have two minutes. Well, since um, the cuts of $1.3 billion, uh, only $500 uh, million were restored, um, schools are still having trouble with uh, funding. Uh, it wasn't uh, the last time we were trying to straighten out the funding. Uh, it was Governor Strickland that had the states paying more for school funding than the property taxpayers. Um, I think we have to go back to a system where the state pays for the school. It is what the Constitution of Ohio mandates. Um, and uh, it's been four times considered un claimed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Um, I think we have to take it from the um, income tax. I think we have to treat it as it is a necessity, as it might be a utility. Um, we can also it, it pass levies in our neighborhoods, but um, I think it has to be a more equitable uh, division and, and um, dispersal of uh, funds. I don't think we need mandates that we can't pay for. I have been in the school system and I've seen what it does. You have to cut somewhere to be able to cover these mandates. Uh, I think it's unfair and unreasonable to ask for them. So I would have to educate myself on what was um, the issue and how important it was. But I think the state would have the responsibility of covering any mandates. Thank you. Ms. Rule? Well, as you know, uh, this past, um, last year we passed House Bill 59. And in House Bill 59 was the budget, the governor's budget. And in that, in that we changed the funding to our schools um, to follow the children. We, wanted to, we want to try and, and um, put the funding where the children are. And, and in doing so, the richer schools got less money. The poorer schools did get more money which is kind of what uh, the, un, the, uh, the uh, um, unconstitutional request in 1997 um, said that we depended too much on property taxes. So we're trying to address that, that question by um, redistributing the funds. There again, the state only has so, many, so much money to distribute. And in and, and changing the way that we funded the state, the schools this year, um, most, not all, but all, most of the schools received as much or more funding than what they received in 2010. So we are starting to restore that money and um, we are looking at, um, instead of one day counting the number of students in each school, we are, we are doing it each month. So therefore we are having a more accurate number of the number of students in each of the schools so that we can do the funding to match that. As far as unfunded mandates, um, no, I'm not in favor of unfunded mandates, but sometimes we have to do things that we don't uh, necessarily like to do in order to get the best education for our kids. And um, so I'm, I'm in favor of getting whatever we can to educate our, our students in um, this district. Mr. Miller, any rebuttal comments? Uh, from 1991 to 2011, uh, the percentage of property taxes uh, paid by Ohio homeowners and farmers went from 47.3%, I'm sorry, 5% to 70% um, because of the reduction in the amount of taxes paid by businesses. I think if the uh, businesses uh, would go back to paying their share, I think it would uh, take a burden off of the taxpayers and the farmers. Ms. Gosick. I agree with Mr. Miller. Uh, businesses need to pay their fair share. I also want to comment that um, part of the f money that follows the children goes to charter schools, and that is part of the problem. Those charter schools don't have to follow the same standards. They do not have to show us where their money is. 40% of their money goes to advertising. And when they fail, the money never comes back to the district. And this attorney general hasn't even gone after the last uh, 10 failed charter schools to get back $31 million back from the White Hat Corporation. So they have been peeling off funds, and that's making the um, problem for school funding worse. Ms. Rule. Well, I disagree. Um, we are going after charters, and um, they will be uh, accountable just like our public schools if they're going to receive public monies. And I can't help what the Attorney General does or does not do. 
Um, all we do is pass laws to uh, um, try to make uh, everybody accountable. So therefore, um, I think that uh, what, what we have in, in uh, place is, is going to work. It just takes time. We'll stay with education for this next question. The Common Core curriculum mandated for our schools here in Ohio has been described as more rigorous than previous mandates, but it is not without its critics. Tell us what you think about Common Core, if you did or would have voted for it, and should it be repealed? Mrs. Skosik, you have two minutes. Ohio schools have always had high standards. Now, um, the Common Core are these standards, and I do not see any need to repeal them. It would take time and money to do all that. Um, I find no problem with having standards that um, are shared with other uh, states, but the way that they're being used, uh, they're being used incorrectly. We have um, been bombarded with tests, these high um, stakes tests, puts a lot of stress on our young, young el uh, elementary schools. Um, the students there are suffering, and um, I think they're using them incorrectly. They should use these tests for analyzing teaching methods, helping uh, students learn, but not use them to punish schools, giving them bad report cards, and evaluating teachers on these tests. That's the part of the Common Core that I think is wrong, and if you talk to most educators, they don't see a problem with having standards but this testing is over, over, overly done. Ms. Rule, you have two minutes. Thank you. Um, as you know, there, there is a bill to repeal it. Um, I am not in favor of repealing it. I've stood strong on the fact that I'm not willing to repeal it until I know what is going to replace it. Um, I've talked to different uh, teachers and superintendents. Um, as far as Common Core, they seem to be adjusting to it. They uh, um, it took, it took them four years to, to implement the English and math. Um, so therefore, I don't feel that what they want to do right now is, is jerk that out and put Massachusetts in, the old Massachusetts, and then come up with our own. If we're going to repeal it, we need to have our own, and we need to have it ready to go. Um, as far as um, I think back in 2010, um, it was put in place. I, I don't remember how I voted on it, to be honest. But it was put in place. I believe I did vote for it because it included race to the top monies. Um, and the schools at that time needed, needed funding. And so therefore, um, we went, uh, the legislature did uh, approve that so that the schools could get some additional funding. Um, but as far as Common Core, I think um, I agree with um, Ms. Skozik that um, the testing is the problem. And we are taking a hard look at what testing there is out there. And um, we, we feel that it's over-testing. So um, I think you're going to see something in the next General Assembly um, making some changes to the testing part. Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. Uh, from talking to people when I'm out going door to door, uh, I've talked to teachers. I've talked to principals. I've talked to uh, superintendents. Uh, the family uh, that I talked to, they are upset with Common Core. They, with the math in particular, two plus two is four. But supposedly if you do it that way, then you get graded wrong for the wrong answer because you didn't do it the way they wanted you to do it. The other is uh, adjusting to it. Uh, from what the teachers have told me, is they spend more of their own time working, trying to uh, work within the Common Core than they were the other way. Uh, my feelings on this is the way I look at it is Common Core needs to go. They have to replace it with something else. But uh, that's basically all I have with that one. Um, okay. Ms. Gosick, you have 30 seconds to respond. Well, I do think the testing needs to be uh, set aside at least for um, a couple of years. Uh, a lot of it is uh, requiring um, technology being used as the testing method, and some schools don't even have that. So I think we need to do something right away. 
Ms. Rule, 30 seconds to respond. Do you have any response? I have no additional. Mr. Miller, anything else to say about it? No, thank you. Tough times, tough decisions. Families paying for levies uh, have had to cut, maybe even meals. Like we all know people that have been in that situation. Uh, schools have cut busing and extracurricular activities and teacher and staffing positions have been taken away. Um, the next question, probably politically incorrect and difficult to answer, I'm sure, but considering that 80% of most school budgets are labor, the fact that most other discretionary spending, as we mentioned, has been cut, does there need to be a legislative discussion about labor expense and restructuring of our current model? And if so, what would the discussion or argument be? And this would go to uh, uh, Margaret Ann Rule. Um, I, I have a question first. Are you talking about just schools, the restructuring of the schools? It, schools, but it could, you could, if you want to blossom that into a further discussion about labor across the board in state um, funding, that's fine. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm in favor of local schools handling their own uh, situation. Um, I know Danville does not have a union down there, um, but the others do, and they seem to, to work it out. Um, I don't believe the state legislature needs to be involved in it. That's why we have a local school board. Um, as far as, um, you know, the, the labor as a general, um, I personally am not in favor of unions, but I am not going to pass legislation to ban them. Um, that, is, that was made very clear to me with House Bill, or Senate Bill 5, and um, the only way that um, I would do, make us a, a right to work, um, state would be by ballot. Okay, Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. Um, as far as being a union official, I've been union official when I worked at Cooper Energy Services. I also was one at Delaware County Sheriff's Office. I protected both company and the, the uh, employee. As far as raising uh, in, or uh, pay raises, stuff like that for teachers, them having a union, that is up to them in the district. Uh, I don't think any legislator should get involved in telling them who can have a union and who cannot. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Gosick. I agree um, with Mr. Miller. And I know that um, Ms. Rule voted for um, SB5 and 3 million signatures and 64% of uh, the voters repealed it. And I'm afraid that the right to work is waiting on someone's table, <laughs> possibly. And that is uh, what I consider to be SB5 on steroids. Um, workers should have the right to be able to sit at a table and talk to their employers about um, salary, safety, insurance. Um, I don't think that um, having um, that right of collective bargaining is hurting anyone. Um, you can see that um, where you have higher salaries, you will also have higher quality. Um, I do feel that uh, we need to protect worker rights. I don't think that's a place where you need to cut. Um, but if you're trying to keep costs down, you could look for other measures instead of uh, going after salaries. Um, when you have well-salaried well employees, you also have a better businesses in your community because they go out and spend. So it's a cycle, and you will grow your economy, and you will um, create more jobs just by demand. Okay, Mrs. Rule, you have 30 seconds. Um, I, I don't know that I have any rebuttal. I, I um, Like I said, I will, not, I will not vote for right to work. I've already made that very clear in Columbus that if we're going to go to a right to work state, then it needs to go to the ballot. Mr. Miller. I agree with Margaret Ann on if you wanna have a vote amongst the citizens of the state of Ohio, the voters, then it should go to them and legislators should stay out of it. Ms. Gosick, any more to say? No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Oftentimes, bills are introduced and never come out of committee at the control of the committee chair or the Speaker of the House. A discharge petition 
with 50 signatures of support could circumvent the committee process and bring the bill to a House vote. Do you feel the use of discharge petitions could be a useful means of prohibiting one person from having too much power in state government? Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. I'm not sure how to answer that one. Um, I'd have to pass on that. I'm not sure how to answer it. I'd have to have more information. Ms. Rule, two minutes. Um, sure. Um, I, have char I have signed a discharge um, paper. It's been three or four years ago when I did it. Uh, we were getting close to the end of the, the uh, session, and uh, there was a bill that um, had to do with veterans that we wanted it out of committee, and uh, we did sign it to get it on the House floor. Um, it, it did make it to the House floor, so I think there is um, a proper uh, use of that. Um, I'm not so sure, but what it might be constitutional that uh, you'd be able to circumvent the uh, uh, committee uh, process and bring it to the House floor. Um, the Speaker is, is elected just like I am for his district, and I think that we need an avenue in which we can bring of legislation of importance to us or to this, what we feel to the state of Ohio and a way to uh, uh, get around that. So I'm in favor of the discharge um, proper form. Ms. Gosick. I agree with Ms. Rule. I would definitely sign a discharge paper. I think that uh, having the committee chair that powerful, there has to be a way to circumvent his his uh, power and bring it to the floor and see what the rest of the House feels. Mr. Miller, anything to add? No. <laughs> Ms. Rule? No. Ms. Gosick? Okay. We're going to switch topics here. The heroin problem is an epidemic all across the country in Ohio, in Knox County, and in the 68th District. However, the most recent budget cut funding for addiction and mental health programs, the budget was cut for those programs. If elected or re-elected, what would you do to restore funding and increase success of these drug treatment programs? Ms. Skosik, you have two minutes. I think we need to reinstitute those. I know they've cut, on, uh, cut funding for DARE and other programs that prevent drug addiction. Um, we have to give our youth uh, constructive things to do so they aren't so enticed and attracted. Um, we have to put those programs in place and refinance them. Um, I have been with students for many years and I can see what happens when they get bored and when they don't have anything better to do. Um, I know there have been uh, problems and uh, we need to find some other areas to cut. We can't cut these social programs. So I would definitely try to find more revenue to put towards social projects like that. And uh, Mr. Miller, two minutes. With the DARE program, um, if you get the students before they get into the fifth grade, you can work with them. Once they get into the fifth grade, it's hard to work with uh, the students. They don't want to take act they don't want to be active in those programs. Uh, I've seen this one while working at Utica uh, Police Department. Uh, we had D.A.R.E. officer up there, and at that point, uh, he said he had to have his students before they got to the fifth grade. Uh, I'm also in favor of cutting back into the uh, drug treatment program, but I'm not sure that D.A.R.E. is the uh, way to go. Uh, if you check D.A.R.E. programs, most of them end up failing. It started in California, and they weren't as active. Uh, they end up losing out. Ms. Rule. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, more and more organizations and, and communities are going to the resource officer instead of the DARE officer. Um, they feel um, that people need to be more comfortable talking to their law enforcement. As far as the state funding, we did do a, a committee last summer who went around and talked to the different communities to find out what we can do to help them. Um, you can't always throw money at everything. And the fact that some of these um, uh, programs have been cut, 
uh, as far as state funding, a lot of them have picked it up locally. Um, you know, the state does not know what Mount Vernon needs uh, specifically funding-wise, and so we, we allow that to go back to the, uh, the locals, and the locals can determine what kind of programs that they can offer. Um, there again, um, the schools are a problem, but it's not just schools. Um, talk to some of your businesses out there. They have some drug problems out there. Also, they can't find individuals to work because they can't pass a drug test. So we have um, students, um, and it's not just um, heroin. Heroin's the cheapest right now. We also have um, prescription drugs. Um, it's a huge problem out there. So we're trying to address the, the problem as a whole, um, but uh, it's very difficult when you have um, different societies that have different problems. Ms. Skosik, any response? Well, it seems like um, the state wants to just throw it back on the communities again, and does that mean we have to raise another levy? Um, I, I think the state should be able to give us the funding to find experts that will work with people on drug programs and also to get into our, our schools and our communities. Um, I don't think um, the state is doing enough on that. Mr. Miller, any response from you? In regards to the resource officer, uh, Utica had one. Uh, it, they end up doing away with it. One, the school did not want to help fund it. The state didn't want to help fund it. So they put it all on back on the Utica Police Department. And the Utica Police Department did not have the funds to do that. By working in Utica, we are not union. So we can go back a little bit there. But we have not received a pay raise at the Utica Police Department for six years. Anything else, Ms. Rule, on this question? No, I, I, think, I think I've covered it. Legislation was passed to control the prison population, which uh, may limit judges to handing down sentences or does, of community control for those convicted of fourth and fifth degree felonies. What are your feelings on legislatures, uh, legislators being t uh, possibly tying the hands of our judges to save mother money rather than punishing the criminals. What are, what's your thoughts about that? Let's start with two minutes for Ms. Rule. Well, first of all, um, I think that the, uh, the crime should, um, punishment should match the crime. And we are, we are making changes in Columbus on different, um, different um, degrees of penalties depending on, like I said, the crimes. So um, as we find out that there are problems, we are trying to address those. Um, you know, times change. Um, obviously, our, our prisons are full, and uh, we're, we're doing our best to keep people out of prisons. A lot of them that are in prison are there because of, of other issues, like uh, mental health issues and stuff like that. We're, we're trying to address those, and that's why some of your penalties are a little, are a little less now. I just passed, um, I didn't pass it, but I had a companion bill where we allowed uh, the um, probate ju juvenile judge a little more latitude, a little clarity. Sometimes the, the clarity in the law is not there, and so um, we, we try to pass laws so that the judges are clear on, on what their responsibilities are. So um, I, as far as, you know, tying their hands, um, they, they go by what laws we pass. There's a law that needs to be passed, and we, they need to be talking to the legislature. Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. On the uh, prison system with the laws, by working in Utica as a police officer, I'll see it as a joke. Uh, they say they try to do crime that fits the uh, person um, until you've been violated by someone, either walking into your garage still in two chainsaws while your daughter is at home by herself, then you don't know how you've been violated. Uh, there's other issues that goes on that deals with drugs in these thefts. They go to court, the judge hands are tied, and they don't get the sentence that they really deserve. People go to prison, they get out early. Um, it, it needs to be changed, the, uh, the system with the prison time 
as well as the county jail time. Community service, I don't think it's working as well as they make out that it is. Um, and that's my views on that one. Ms. Skosik, you have two minutes. Well, uh, we see crime rising and um, we see spending more on prisons. Uh, but what we should be doing is trying to keep crime down, one with giving people better education and more hope for the future so that crime is not so attractive. Um, when they are caught, we need more uh, you know, police and, and security so that we can keep crime down. As Mr. Miller pointed out, you have to have a good rapport, police with the community. Um, I don't think the state should be tying the hands of any judges, but uh, the problem is we're ha we have so much crime and we don't, uh, don't spend enough on education and more on really um, prisons and um, punishments. Uh, we have to go back to the source of the problem and the problem is, is the crime. But no, I don't feel that uh, the state should tie the hands of judges. Um, if we have too much crime, we have to find the source and take care of it there. Ms. Rule, you have 30 seconds to respond. Um, I don't know that I have any additional. Mr. Miller? Uh, law enforcement's got a split second to make decisions, uh, especially with the bank robber in uh, Utica that I was involved with. Uh, if the guy turns and points a toy gun at you, do you shoot him or not? If you shoot him, then you're going to get crucified for it. We need to have laws and we need to have them to do the crime, not because they're on drugs or something else. If they, they do the crime, they need to do the time. Ms. Gosick, 30 seconds. Well, I just think um, it's a problem in our society and we have to, again, go to the source. Um, I know we have a lot of, we're spending more on incarceration than we are on education and that might be the problem. But um, right now, we have to do what we can with uh, beefing up our security, our relations with the police, and um, trying to keep our neighborhood safe, keep our children safe. Local government funds have realized huge reductions under the current administration. This now means our townships especially are struggling to provide the very basic necessities, including road repairs. Was this a smart budget cut? And if elected, will you sponsor legislation that will return local government funds back to the governments that need it? Mr. Miller, you have two minutes. I am one person. I only have one voice in the legislature. The only thing I can do is try to talk to the other, other legislators to get them to see the viewpoints that I'm trying to get across to them. With the townships, I'm aware of their problems. I've talked to the township trustees. They tell me how they have troubles with Howard Township. They had two employees last year due to the fund cutting and stuff. They're, if they're, their levy doesn't pass for Howard Township, they're not sure what they're going to do next year. They did get a uh, levy passed last year to redo the roads but that doesn't cover the other work that has to be done on those township roads. So they're looking at a layoff of possibly one employee and they go down and the township trustees will have to do the work themselves. Ms. Gosick, you have two minutes. I would definitely vote for a reversal of the tax cuts that have happened. Um, cities and townships and uh, municipalities are suffering because, uh, because of several cuts. Um, we need to come up with a fairer system of taxation, new, new sources of revenue, um, and we have to give those municipalities uh, back some of the funds. Um, there was the 12.5% rollback, so when we do have levies, um, now we have to pay 100% instead of the state paying the 12.5% they used to pay, and that's a reason they had to cut. Um, we uh, have had... Um, lots of cuts and our our security our safety our roads are uh, all dependent on the funds that we have so I think we need a fairer system of taxation a new source of uh, revenue um, the middle class and, and uh, lower income families have been paying more because of the sales tax 
and that doesn't come back to their communities anymore. Um, also, uh, seniors are paying more because if you make over 30500 as a senior, you're living high on the hog and you do not get the homestead um, exemption and, and discount anymore. But um, I think, you know, balancing the budget at the state level sounds real good, but when you're starving the municipalities that need this help, uh, I think I would vote for a reversal of that. Ms. Rule, two minutes. Thank you. Um, as far as the local government, what we're trying to do at the state is we're trying to help grow jobs. And when you have increased jobs, you have increased income, you have income tax, you have other avenues to raise money um, locally. So um, what we're doing is we're promoting jobs and um, we are, are working with our schools to uh, get uh, students um, into those, uh, um, educated for those jobs. As you know, we're, we're kind of in a bubble here in Knox County because we have jobs available. Other places in the state of Ohio, Ohio do not have those. Um, one thing that we did put in the budget is we did put um, some one-time dollars available. It's a grant for the local governments to apply for. Um, um, we put $45 million in there for uh, 2013. And of that, I, I don't have the numbers that say how, how many have used that, but there are some monies available there. Um, as far as taking away the, the uh, two and a half, or the 12 and a half percent, um, there again, we're, we're looking at saving money as well as everybody else. And it's all tax dollars. Um, therefore, um, whether you pay it in, in your property tax or whether you pay it in a sales tax, or whether you pay it in an income tax, it's still tax ta ta taxpayers' dollars. And um, the, two, the 12 and a half percent that, that um, are on only a re um, replacement or new levies, it, on a renewal levy, it will stay the same. Um, and therefore, uh, it's a savings to the, to the um, state, the, the local entities get it either way. Mr. Miller, you have 30 seconds to respond. On the uh, pro-jobs, uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, about three years ago, there was a guy from Texas who wanted to open up a business in Utica. He was going to bring in 188 employees. Uh, due to the electric company not being able to provide him with the proper equipment, uh, they offered him a million, they wanted a million dollars for it, then they wanted two million, then it jumped up to four million. The guy couldn't do it, he went to Columbus to the state house, tried to get re uh, representation to get that reduced down so that he could open his business in Utica, employing 188 people. That went down the tubes. Ms. Gosick, you have 30 seconds. Cuts do not make jobs. Uh, look at Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Kansas is going about bankrupt because they have cut so deep. Uh, it's not growing the economy. It's not making jobs. Um, the one percent income tax or one percent sales tax hurts the middle and and uh, lower income, and that is never returned to the cities, the municipalities, or the schools. It goes into the tax cuts that have been basically favoring the wealthy, the top 1%. So I'm sorry, but I don't believe that those cuts are helping grow the economy or create jobs. So I would reverse them. Mr. Rule, final comments? Well, I disagree. Um, I believe that the cuts that we are making are growing. The state of Ohio, we've, we've uh, replaced the 400, of the 400,000 jobs that have left, we've replaced it with uh, 250 jobs. We're building Ohio back up, and I believe that the cuts that we are made, made have enticed um, individuals to look at Ohio to come here. So far, we've discussed education, drug addiction, tax cuts, uh, tax money, not making it back to local municipalities. What are three other big issues you would like to tackle if elected or reelected, and how would you approach creation of legislation? Ms. Gosick, you have two minutes. Well, I uh, have several. 
Um, I do think we need to um, protect our environment. Um, we need to come up with different sources of energy. I know that we uh, have put a freeze. The Ohio legislature has frozen uh, the, the standards uh, for a couple of years that we don't have to come up with clean energy. Um, we are having problems with water. Um, the um, the uh, Toledo incident with the um, algae bloom and um, those kinds of things are something that I think we need to address in our uh, legislature. Um, that's one issue. Um, I also think we need to um, get with the program and allow voters to have easy access to the polls. Um, we keep fighting for um, voter rights, making it easy. We only have about 30% of our population, our citizens that are eligible voting. I think uh, young voters are discouraged and think it doesn't even count. Um, and once we get a good bill and early voting and um, uh, absentee ballots, then they try to close it down again. So voting rights, I think we need to keep open. Uh, we can't have a democracy without uh, easy ask access to the polls. Uh, another issue, I think, would be um, the, uh, maybe the issue of uh, women's rights. E equal pay for equal work can be a local thing. Um, I think uh, we have uh, cut some health uh, clinics that women need, and I think um, it's uh, showing that perhaps we don't think women are intelligent enough to make their own uh, decisions. Um, I think that would be an issue I would take up. Margaret Ann? Well, I think one of the most important things that we need to work on is our agriculture. Um, we, they are getting um, um, accused of the algae bloom, um, whether it comes from the agriculture, part of it does. Um, so I, I intend to help work on resolving some of that problem, um, whether it takes legislation. We did pass legislation where our uh, farmers need to be certified on fertilizer application. Uh, certification. Um, so I think since agriculture is one of our largest business in the state of Ohio, that's one of the major things that I would be working on in the next General Assembly. Um, also jobs. There again, just because we have some good jobs here that are available, we still have a lot of places that are hurting. And we need to work on, on jobs and with jobs come, um, you know, stable uh, people that can buy houses, the economy. Uh, starts to starts to grow, and so we. Uh, um, those are the the main things, the main two that I would work on. Um, the rest of the rest of the things kind of fall in place once you once you get your jobs going. Education follows right behind it. Mr. Miller, three issues. Um, well, I don't have three issues, but I'm like Joyce on the environment. Uh, she mentioned about uh, a. Lake Erie and the algae bloom. Uh, what I would do on that portion of it, I would, uh, I'm sure we got people who's in the state that can do a chemical test and find out truly where those chemicals are coming from. I don't think somebody just throwing up in the air and saying it's the farmers doing it. Uh, there's got to be a reason for it. Um, uh, the jobs is a big issue with me, and if I may, uh, we just had a recent layoff at uh, Rolls-Royce. There was uh, 23 jobs lost. I'm sorry. I think there were 15 jobs lost there. First of September, there was 23 jobs lost up at uh, Foot Foundry. That's Margaret Ann's home district or home residency. Um, it's caused Foot Foundry closed. They've been open for a hundred and some years and then they just up and closed. They couldn't buy, get anyone to buy that business. Uh, there is a warehouse in the Lewis Center area uh, that is ready to close. Uh, they're going to move to Mississippi. Uh, with that business, there's 180 some employees there and they're going down to 20 some people next year. With Rolls Royce, they've said in the paper that they're gonna be laying off floor workers next year. 
So my big push would be for the uh, keep jobs here in Ohio. Ms. Gosick, you have 30 seconds to respond if you wish. I do agree that jobs are a very important issue. And um, I don't think the state is doing enough. I don't think Jobs Ohio is getting the job done. <laughs> but um, there's also uh, the issue of a danger to our water. Our, uh, the fracking that's going on is also uh, endangering possibly our water table. And I think we have to take a look at that as part of the environmental problems. Ms. Rule, anything else you wanted to add? Well, I, I would disagree on the fracking part. Um, we've passed really strong laws and we have um, added inspectors that um, the, uh, the fracking that we do in Ohio, it creates jobs, they're good paying jobs and um, our water is safe. And um, I, I stand by that um, and, and, and the laws that we passed. Um, there again, it's, it's all about jobs. And Mr. Miller, 30 seconds. Currently, they're dumping uh, radioactive type water from the other wells into the wells that are being drilled. As you uh, remember, West Virginia, they had a line down there that broke. It wasn't from fracking, but from uh, pipelines. Uh, they also had it out west. What's to say that these wells that are being drilled, that they won't frack, break, and we'll have that contaminated water within our water supply. What is your strategy? As you see, you've got a lot of um, constituents here before us, but there's a lot more out there that we're never going to show their face or come out to see you necessarily. Uh, what is your plan uh, before co sponsoring, co-sponsoring, or voting on legislation to engage the constituency? Do you have an actual process, or is it simply asking cons uh, constituents as you see them about um, um, issues that matter? And we'll start with uh, Mr. Miller. What I've currently been doing has been going door to door talking to people. Uh, there's some of the people who said they're not going to vote. They're fed up with the Republicans. They're fed up with the Democrats. Uh, I even had a person who is running for public office who is a Democrat said that she wished that they do away with all Republican and Democratic parties, everybody be an individual. Uh, I talked to two people yesterday. I was out going door to door and both of them were not going to vote. I, after talking to them, I told them, I said, you vote for who you want, vote for me if you want. Just get out and vote. Uh, they complain about the president. They complain about everybody. They're fed up with our state government. They wish they were all voted out of office. And I told them I had no control over that. I'm just running for one job. What about when you're in office? When I'm in office? Yes. When I'm in office, I'll go out and I'll talk to the people. Uh, I had several people tell me yesterday this is the first time in their life as being a voter that anybody ever came out and spoke with them. Uh, when I get there, it holds me up because I'm there anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes talking to these people. They want somebody to talk to. They said currently they're not getting the representation that they want. I would continue talking to the people. Ms. Rule, you have two minutes. Thank you. Um, well, uh, obviously, since I am the office holder, I do communicate with people. Um, I'm, I'm on the local radio station once a month, which you can call in with questions, what m many people do. I try to keep them up to date on what legislation is pending at the state. Um, I also um, have email addresses. I also attend, I'm, I'm going to a monthly meeting. At, it seems like every week I'm at, a, at least a meeting. I hold office hours in Delaware, and also I um, am, am available here in Knox County. Um, obviously, my email um, is the, the easiest way to communicate with me. Um, many of you have already done that. You know how to do that. I have one worker who reads all my emails and um, coordin coordinates those based on the, the legislation that is pending. Um, we. Uh, also, you can call the office, you can write letters to us. 
Um, there again, like I said, I, I love this community, so I'm here in the community. I attend all sorts of meetings. You can always talk to me at any point. Um, it's, it, there's so much legislation going on, I cannot you know, pick up the phone and call everybody um, and ask them, you know, does this, this legislation, um, which way do you, you feel about it? So um, the best communication is emails. Um, and that I'm not a techie person, that's why I have a, a person who works for me that does all that and coordinates it. Um, but um, the, the modern age is email, and I can tell you that my new part of my district in, in Delaware, they know how to use emails. Um, I, I get hundreds a day. And Ms. Skozik? Well, I think a lot of people are disillusioned uh, by our form of government and don't bother voting. Uh, part of it is the gerrymandering. I think if I were in office, I would try to get that uh, abolished. We have to find another way to make fair districts. Um, the cost of running is also uh, way too uh, costly and that's why people, uh, you know, don't run and there are uncontested races. Um, I think you need to keep the lines of communication open. Uh, contact your constituents. If there's a farm bill up, you go to the farm board and you ask them what do they think, the, uh, the different areas. Uh, if you have an uh, education issue, you talk to superintendents, students, teachers, uh, go on the ground and find out what, they, what is their feeling on it. Um, I think you could also do that, um, as Ms. Rule said, by emails and um, your website and uh, just keep communications open for people. But I do think gerrymandering has uh, really disillusioned a lot of people and we have to do something about that and if I were in office, I would try. Mr. Miller, you have 30 seconds to respond. No rebuttal. Ms. Rule? Um, I, I would like to say though that um, if you contact my office, we do have a, a file of emails that when, um, if you wanna know what's coming up for vote, we do send out those email contacts. It's the quickest way to do it. Um, my, my legislative aide can do it while I'm on the House floor and then she can text me and tell me what the results are. So, um, you know, electronic communication is the best way to go. And Ms. Skosik, 30 seconds. That sounds like a good method. Um, I also think, um, you know, uh, for those people that are not of the tech uh, society that, um, you know, mailings uh, would also be handy. We have flown by this hour, and we have so many questions left uh, that will probably go unanswered this evening. Um, I think now we'll move on to closing remarks. We'll start with Ms. Skosik. We'll give you three minutes. Well, I want to thank you all for attending this evening, and uh, thank the Mount Vernon News and Knox Pages and, um, for organizing the debate. I hope that you have seen where our, our positions are, and um, I hope that you can understand then um, the passion I feel for, well, public education. I think we need to give a quality education to all students around the state. I hope you sense that I have a desire to protect individual rights, our voting rights, our worker rights, women's rights, um, individual rights in general. I think uh, government is here to do projects that we can't do alone but it is not here to impose anything on um, individuals. I want a fair tax system. Uh, we need to find new sources of revenue. Um, we might consider a severance tax. They are now fracking, taking oil and natural gas. Um, these are resources that belong to our state, and I don't think those are taxed. Uh, and I also know that Ohio is one of six states in the whole nation that doesn't tax profits on uh, corporations. Um, I think our, uh, we have to lift the burden off the middle class and lower class and let there be a fair system where everyone pays their fair share in taxes. And this would take care of some of the, the problems that we're having with cuts and shortfalls. I want to protect our vulnerable citizens, um, our senior citizens, I think need special attention, and our children for growing our future. We need to uh, invest in them and provide what they need in the line of health care, constructive activities, food, and safe neighborhoods. Um, I am a good listener. I consult with people. 
I would um, work well with people of all um, parts of society. I would educate myself before voting on a bill. I would certainly do that. Um, and I would consult the people whose lives it would affect. So with that, I'm asking for your vote and for your support. And uh, if you could tell your friends and family what you've heard this evening and what you thought of our um, debate. And I would like you to send me to Columbus and I would like you to help me make the Ohio government work for all Ohioans and not just the special interests and a few. So I thank you for your time and I thank you for your support. Hopefully your vote. Ms. Rule, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, the Mount Vernon News, uh, Knox Pages, and WQIO for um, hosting us, um, allowing us to come and speak. Thank you for re rearranging it to, to meet my schedule and I believe the rest of us, our schedules. Um, I, I know you had a, a good crowd at the, uh, the, the previous debate you had and it would have been nice if we could have all been there. Um, so that the uh, citizens wouldn't have to come out on a cold, rainy day, evening like tonight. Um, but I think you, uh, you have also got a chance to be educated as to uh, a little bit of what the state representative does. We only hit a little bit. Um, there's no way you can be adverse to in everything that goes on at the state. And I can tell you that legislation moves very quickly. Uh, between November 4th and uh, December 31st, you're going to see all sorts of legislation to go really, really quickly. So if there's any legislation out there that you're interested in, or um, I suggest you, you check the internet, just because lots of times we don't get much notice. Um, there again, legislation can move very, very, very quickly. Um, I think I've told you a few things that uh, I'm interested in. Um, I too, I, I'm a very good listener, um, have been my whole life. Uh, I've been in the public service for um, over 30 years, and um, you have blessed me to uh, um, represent you the last six years, and I am going to ask that you continue to uh, support me for another, another term in Columbus, and um, I have uh, all sorts of endorsements that have uh, supported me this, at this election. I won't go through the list, um, but anyhow, uh, I just ask for your support um, and uh, on November 4th, and just remember to make it a rule on November 4th. Mr. Miller, you have three minutes. Public service has always been a calling linked with the notion that you are the voice of the constituents you, are, you represent. You are a problem solver, and as a problem solver, you remain connected to your constituents and guide their conversations and energies as you navigate acceptable answers to uh, specific concerns. The issues that currently exist in Ohio communities are a result of ineffective public policy, misguided priorities, and the politics of the few, which have become largely disconnected from the interest of the taxpaying public and benefits deprived by communities. To attract jobs in Ohio, Ohio businesses need strong educational communities which produce skilled and competent grads. Public education need the foundation which provides opportunities to individuals to grow and flourish. When individuals grow and flourish, businesses grow and flourish with stability and new innovative ideas. An educated Ohio is an Ohio of opportunity. The partnership between the state's responsibility to invest and fund in the through and efficient education of children in the centerpiece of this constitutional commitment, the model and practice of shifting the greater burden of the state's financial responsibility to property owners by way of school levies, taxes, is a prime example of the present existing failed policy and those current supporting this failed model. A failed school funding system fails the children of Ohio and fails the businesses of Ohio from a future of possibilities. Diverting public money from unbalanced congressional 
I'm sorry, operational requirements to charter schools experience have uh, had disastrous results. Taxpayer money has been squandered by the millions. Is this the voice of the Ohio taxpayer? Communities need the security of adequate police and fire personnel, an ever-ending changing world of drug abuse, violence, and negligence. As flow through monies to counties and cities are cut, the, uh, the protections offered to communities and families are cut. Once again, passing on to the taxpayer is the local tax levy. Uh, the state budget and its supporters have again attacked communities and families. Is this the model of the proud? Thank you. I ran out of time, sorry. <laughs> Candidates, thank you so much for joining us tonight um, and giving us all so much to think about as we make our decisions for election day. We want to offer a special thank you to Wayne Bauer for the technical support he's provided us this evening, um, as well as our partnership with the Mount Vernon School District, Knox Pages, and WQIO, WMVO. I thank you all for joining us this evening, and please uh, join me in congratulating our candidates on such a wonderful debate.